Okay, folks. What we're going to look at today is we are going to look at this uh, grid and a cell system. Okay. So a uh, we're going to look at how, how can we draw a simple cell on a screen, like a, it's basically a square box. Right. We're going to make a class out of it. But a grid is really just a whole bunch of cells. Okay. So um, we'll also look at how we can do that. And then I'll tie in how the grid is an array of cells, because that's really it is. It's a two-dimensional array. Has a length, has a length and a, and a width to it, right? Uh, or a number of rows and columns, really. Okay, so we'll look at that. Um, and what we're also going to do is this uh, grid that we create. We're going to create it as a dynamic link library. Okay. So when we a dynamic dynamic link library is a program that is basic or or it's code that's compiled, um, and would, and but you can't run it. Like you can't double click on it and it actually executes and runs. So how it works is you include dynamic link libraries in other projects. So what we're going to do is we're going to create this grid that we could reuse in other projects too, which we might use later on uh, when we look. You might want to use it for your game. You might want to enhance it, use it for a game. You might want. We might want to. Maybe we're going to enhance it. And then later on, when we look at mazes and recursion, we're going to be able to use this grid to kind of go through a maze kind of thing. Um, so we'll be looking at that too. So we'll be able to reuse the code, whether we use this, reuse the DLL, maybe, maybe not. Okay, we might or might not. Um, so it's it's just a it's just basically what we're going to do is we're going to create our own library, like how. Um, uh, Microsoft create you know how they have all the different libraries like in system and and, and then like the math library and all we're gonna create our own library and then we can and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this DLL in our own in a project okay so I'll show you how to do it okay so we're gonna kind of create we'll create a solution the solutions gonna have the DLL in it and then like a Windows form kind of test program that accesses it so we're gonna have one program kind of accessing this DLL Okay? And a lot of times if you're going to go work in a company somewhere, um, let's say you're going to work in a company and want you to create some sort of program that has like a scheduler in it. I mean, to uh, do a whole scheduler from scratch and you kind of coding everything might take you months and months and months. But what you might look, what we might do is kind of go to, um, there's all these kinds of companies out there that build little components. And there's, uh, I know there is, there's definitely uh, scheduler components that are out there that you could just take and drag and drop onto your uh, form and now you have the schedule and then you customize it based on the properties and methods that they expose to you right so um, there's just companies that make quite you know a living off of doing that kind of thing right so that you don't have to sit there and you know you're not a scheduler programmer or whatever right you're trying to solve a business problem but you got all these technical issues and so you could go buy components so I'm going to show you how to make one and then uh, once you see how one's made, you'll use it. And then uh, if you ever have to use other people's components for your own projects, then uh, you'll know how to do it. Okay? So to start off, we got to think about how we're going to design this actual cell. First, the thing we want to do is design a cell before we do any coding. Okay, so I kind of put on the board. So a cell is basically this little square that we're going to have. And a grid is going to be a whole bunch of these put together, right? A whole bunch of these cells put the, you know, the things off, right? That's why I call it super smart board, right? So it's a whole bunch of these cells that are put together, and they're going to line up much better than that because so that it looks like we have just pure rows and columns. So when we look at this cell, if I want to draw this on, the, on my form somewhere, here's my form, you know, what are the things that I need to get? So I'm basically I'm just drawing a rectangle, right? We're going to call it a cell. Now my cell might want to have a uh, color in the background. So well, maybe it's going to be red or white, whatever. It's going to have a color, border, that kind of stuff. So and it's going to have a position. Like where is it going to where is it going to sit? When I draw it, we got x and y coordinates that we got to take care of. So what we want to do is start to come up with uh, well, we'll just brainstorm all together. What are kind of, so whether it's going to be included in the final uh, cell, 
uh, or not, doesn't matter. So they'll just start throwing out ideas. What are some things that we need to consider in order to create a class that doesn't take care of everything? So I mentioned a whole bunch. So what are some of the things? Start throwing out ideas. Whether you're right or wrong, doesn't matter. So I want to draw the cell. Right? I want to write code that does that. So what is it? What are like some properties or characteristics? Okay, it's going to have to have a size, right? So we'll look at that. What's that? Yeah, we could do that. We probably won't implement that one, but yeah. What's that? Array. Array of, well, we're going to do that. That would be part of the grid. So we're just looking at one cell. Location, so, well, and how would that be broken up into? X and Y. So we got X and Y position or location. We need that. We need to know where it's going to be drawn. So it's going to start from here. Now that size could be broken down into two, two components. Length, yeah. We got our length and our width of it. Right? Maybe we ask that. Maybe we just say size because maybe we just want it to be a square. So the grid, it has to be, or it's going to be lopsided. It might not work out. Well, no, it wouldn't. But yeah, well, when we, when we do a grid, it's usually, in this case here, we're going to make it probably like that. Uh, later on, if we do have to modify it, you can actually have it enter. So we might just say, yeah, size, but internally, the size will be both the length. So if I say 10 pixels, the size will be 10 for the width and 10 for the, for the height. If you want to do, if you want to enhance this and actually ask for the length and the width, you can make it different, different size. Sorry? 10 colors? 10, uh, well, what would, the, what would the color be for? We could have two, we could have colors for two things. Border and? Fill color, uh, we'll call it fill color. Or it might be background color. Oh, background color is that. Or cell color, background color. What was the other one? Border color? Oh, that might be. Is there anything else you think? Let me see what I got here. What's that? Yeah, we can add it. Uh, in this case, we're not going to put any text in, but yeah, we could. So, like, if you wanted to add text into it, you can do uh, text alignment, text, right? We can put stuff for text. So I'm not going to do that. So, if you're going to do a culminating project where you want to put text, you might have to add that in, but we're not going to do that. But yeah, that's, uh, that would go in there too. Same thing with picture. Maybe you could center. So you might have, uh, maybe you have, like, a, a content alignment property which will align it to the left, the middle, whatever, or center it. You can even do it vertically, horizontally, kind of like Word does, where you can put it south. Yeah, I mean, we're not going to get that complex. So, but yeah, that would go in there too. So let me see. We got size, but I think we can go with what we have here. Okay? So let me see. The things that I want to use, we're going to use size. Uh, we're not going to use the border size, but that's good too. Well, we're just going to make it one pixel. Again, if you have to do that and what you want, you can easily change that. So when it draws, it draws it with a different size border. But that's fine. Um, we're going to do background color and border color for sure. What we, we need to use this. But we might not make it a property. Does that make it a, I didn't make it a property. But we could. But we could. But we, we're going to use it in one of the methods. Okay? So what we're going to do here is um, we'll definitely have a constructor for the cell. So we'll have a constructor. Okay? And then we'll have properties. And then for the properties, all I think we, we can go with is uh, size is good, um, background color, and border color. 
We'll spell it the Canadian way. We're Canadian. And um, we do need a method. Let's see if you guys can figure it out. There's one method that we need. Right? If I want this to be shown up on the screen, we got it. We need some sort of draw method, right? So we need a method called draw. I don't have to name it draw cell because it is part of the cell class, right? This is my cell class. So inside my cell class, I just call it draw. In my grid class, I'm going to have a draw also. But I thought I'm not going to call it draw grid. But it's part of that. It's part of the actual grid class. So when the person uses that class, right? When the person uses the grid class and calls draw, they're drawing the grid. The person uses the cell class and calls draw, they're drawing the cell. Right? Even though those two methods are the same, they're contained in separate classes, in separate files, and uh, we implement them completely separately. Okay? And for the constructor, well, we'll call it cell, what are some things that we might want to, when we initialize it, what, should, what could we initialize? Yeah, we can initialize its cell, its size, its border color, and I think we can put all these three things in there. So whenever we create a cell, we'll initialize it to something. Okay? We can uh, enhance this later on and then actually uh, change it, right? We can, we can enhance it so that um, maybe... Um, Maybe we don't initialize it, right? Maybe we uh, we have to set the price. That's how you want to use it. There's a lot of different ways. But I think what we'll do is when we when we create the cell, we'll initialize its size, its border color, and its uh, background color to something plain, like black and white, right? And then um, we call the draw to draw it at a particular location on the screen. When we draw. We want to specify its x and its y position. And also, we actually have to pass in the surface that it's been drawn. Because this method, uh, this uh, class cell, I can draw it on anything that, uh, that allows me to draw onto it. It doesn't have to be a form. It could be a button. It could be uh, another control. Uh, it could be whatever I want. So I have to pass in here some type of graphics object. Remember we use that when we draw? So graphics g will have to pass in. Okay. So when someone calls the draw method, they'll pass in the actual graphics object of the form. Right? Remember how we, when we created it? So I'll show you how to do that, obviously. We pass that in, we pass the x and y position. So it'll, it'll know where to draw it on the form. Okay? And then the code will go inside here and then create the cell uh, based on its current size, its background color, and its border color. Right? not a lot of code, really, to do. So why don't we, uh, there, does that make sense to everybody so far? Yeah. Okay. And then what we're going to do now, let's get this built. We'll test it out. And then what we'll do is we'll create the grid object that is an array of these things. Now, I know we started to do that with the, um, with the, uh, the employee. This is going to work out much better, and I think it'll be much more clear to how it works. Okay? Because I thought the other one was going to work, but then... Coming out right. So this will work. This will work out much better. So what we're going to do is we'll take this concept. We'll open up C sharp, and what we're going to do is we're going to create a different type of project. Well, well, uh, our solution maybe we'll call it grid test. Okay, but the actual DLL uh, we're going to call it something else. So let's just start off. So what we're going to do is we're going to do file new project. I don't know if everyone, everyone has everything up, right? So we're going to do file, new project. So what you're going to pick is called a class library. You see that there? It's like about the fourth item down. Okay. The library name we're going to call, typically when you create a library, you usually put your company name, you put a period in there, and then you call it whatever you want. Okay, so I think a good name for this would be Ambro. We don't have a company, so we'll use our school. Ambro dot uh, grid. We could just call it grid, but the reason why I'm not uh, 
just calling it grid is because what if there's something built into Microsoft called grid and then we might have a name conflict. So sometimes if I want to reference a grid, there might be another grid that's there built into some other object. So if I call it Android.grid, I know that I'm dealing with the one that we built. Right? And when we create uh, library names, you can put a period in between. So I could call it Android.something. Something. I could put a whole bunch of dots in there to dis become distinctive of what the actual uh, name of this uh, actual uh, DLL is. Or the library. Okay? So the library will be called uh, Android.grid. We, so when we want to use it, we would have to go into the form and say using ambro.grid, and then we can use it. But we'll, when we get to that point, we'll do it. So right now we'll call ambro.grid, but the solution name I'm going to change, because uh, like I said, we're going to, and we'll just call it uh, grid test. And then uh, make sure you pick the location you want to save it in. So let me switch things around here to the right course. By default, it comes up with a uh, class one. I mean, um, we could just delete it because we're not going to use that one. And then we'll just add our own. So we'll add, uh, I mean, you could, when you do add, uh, you could just do class. So it'll automatically pick it for us. And uh, what we'll do is we'll call this uh, class cell. Okay. And then we have our cell. And notice that the namespace is ambro.grid. Now we don't need system.txt, link queue, generic. We don't need those, so you delete those. But in order to do drawing, we will need to include something. Okay? So um, we're going to have to have access to that graphics object, right? Um, it, it won't work uh, unless I put in. Uh, so you're going to add in using uh, system.graphics. Uh oh, wait a second here. It's not there. Uh oh, not there. Okay, so what do we got to do? Well, we have to go to our references over here. Now, these um, by default, these references include a whole bunch of libraries. Okay, so this way, when it compiles your program, it doesn't include it; doesn't attach itself to all this, uh, all the libraries that exist, because there's tons of them. If I wanted to distribute this uh, uh, code to another computer. I don't want to have to copy all or, or distribute all, maybe every single library that exists that Microsoft creates, right? So you don't want to include everything because they got stuff for Windows, uh, sorry, for like web development. They got stuff for networking. I mean, we're not going to do any of that kind of stuff, right? So in order to go to the references, what we have to do is we actually have to add in the system dot uh, drawing. I think it's called system dot drawing. Let me see. I, so we're going to right click and we're going to go to, and, and we're going to add reference. Now when we create a project that has a form in it, it's automatically in there because forms need it to draw itself. So it includes the classes, right? But in this DLL, it comes pretty plain. It doesn't know that we need to graphically draw anything. So we just have to add it. So when you do add reference by, click, by, by uh, right clicking where this uh, references are, so you do add reference. We're going to go to .NET, and it's got to be in here somewhere. Just bear with me if I don't find it right away. Ah, there it is, system.drawing. Uh, I think it's in, just in that one. So, so we're going to pick system.drawing, and it even tells you it's in a DLL called system.drawing.dll, you see? Notice that Microsoft, they have a, a system.dll. That's where math and console was in. Okay. But if we want to use any drawing, it's not in that system DLL. It's in the system.drawing. Okay. And that's why, we, that's why, we, that's why, that's what the, they use. They use this period in between to create a dis distinction between classes. So it's still part of the system, 
but it's actually another DLL. We're going to add it in, say OK. So we got system.drawing in there. So now we should be able to do using uh, system.drawing. And then that'll give us access to the graphics uh, command. If it doesn't, we got to look up one of the other, other ones and we'll add, we'll add in one of the other DLLs. But I think that's all we have to do. So again, when I copy this, if I want to distribute it, this to other computers, as long as they got these things there installed on there, it'll work fine. Right? It doesn't have, I don't need to have every single DLL. Or, or when my project gets copied over, make sure that all these are with it, and the program will work. Okay, we don't do any distribu distri distribution stuff um, in this course, but, you know, um, it's kind of good to know. Does that make sense, how that works? Because we're including only the libraries that we want to use, right? There's thousands of them probably, right? You saw the list of all those .NET components, right? If we go in here, these are all libraries that we could add. I mean, look at them all, right? We don't want to add all these to every single project, do we? That's a lot. Okay. So over here, um, we'll just put our uh, header comment, uh, cell class, okay, use to... Um, uh, create to draw a cell on a drawing uh, surface. Maybe we'll put the, the date. We should be able to finish it in class today. You can put your name in there too. I just left mine out. What we what we want to do is we want to um, add uh, the constructor, the fields. Well, the fields should go first, right? all the private variables that are going to store the values for all the properties, right? Or any other private vi variables that we want to have in there. In this case, it just should be just those three. The size, the background color, and the border color. So those will be our fields. Then we're going to put our constructor in there. Then we'll create our properties. And then we'll create our methods, which we just have the one for now. Okay? So let's add our fields in. So we'll create a little section for our fields with a comment and um, we're going to create private variables for we're going to create private variables for um, all those properties so we can we can use this uh, the concept of encapsulation right the only way to assign the value to these properties or to these fields is through the property or through the or through a method or constructor Right? You can't go directly to the variable and get access to it. So that's why they're all going to be private. So nobody can access it unless it's inside the class, it, this class itself. Okay? Um, for the size, uh, we'll just do as an integer. So we'll call it M size. So again, uh, we put a little M in front to say it's a private member. I don't know. That's the way I've always done it. It seems to work quite nicely. And um, for the background color and the border color, we can use the structure called color to do that. Kind of like how we did with the uh, image, the image program. Remember, it, it was a it was a, the data type was a, called color. So for these ones, we'll say private color. It's a struct. It's called a structure color, um, and it is uh, M background color. And uh, private color, and it'll be uh, M border color. This way, when someone has to assign a value to those very right through the property or through the uh, constructor, they have to pass in a color, right? So they can use color dot whatever. And then this way, we ensure that a proper color is passed in. 
Typically, I usually put my constructor, my constructors next. Okay. So we'll make a little section constructors. I'm going to show you a um, a new a new type of. Um, a new concept today, object-oriented concepts in your notes. So we looked at data abstraction and encapsulation, right? Oops. It's right here. Okay. With our accessors and our mutators, make sure you understand those terms. That's where their properties getting set. Well, I'll I'll say that again when we do those. Um, the other one we're gonna look at today is uh, uh, called polymorphism. Okay. What this term what this term means is um, you have one name, but there are many many forms. So basically. What I, what I, the way we're going to use it is I could have, let's say, two constructors, right? Or I could have a method and with the same name, but I could have two or three versions of it, okay? Um, remember how when we use some of these commands like, uh, you know, console.write line, uh, you see that there's like one of 23 choices because... Uh, there's 23 versions of it, let's say. I don't know how many there are. I'm just using the number 23 off the top of my head, right? So a lot of times when you're using these built-in uh, class, uh, classes with their methods and properties, well, properties, you, you're only going to have one. But when you have methods, you can have more than one method of the same name. Now, in order to make it work so that C Sharp will recognize each, let's say I had two methods, as long as... Um, I have either a different number of input parameters or the input parameters are of, a, of different data types. So I could have one that has uh, one method, let's say it's called draw, and it has it, it passes in x and y's as integers, right? I could have another draw method and it passes x and y in as doubles, right? So when I use that particular method, draw, if I'm passing in values that are doubles, guess what? It'll go to the one that is that passes that the method that has the input parameters of doubles, and it'll run that code. If I pass in the values as integers, it'll use the version of draw that has integers, right? Or maybe I have a method that has no input parameters right and one that does have one or more input parameters so I could easily create two versions okay but I cannot create okay two methods with the same name if the input parameters doesn't matter if the variable names are different it's the data types okay then it'll allow me to do it the compiler has to know which one I'm making reference to. So that's why you can have multiple versions of it, but you can't have the same input parameters. Uh, I don't know if it works with the with the return type. Maybe one method returns a string, another one returns a double. I don't know if it works like that off the top of my head. I have to test that out. We would just try it and do it. But you could try that out on your own. The concept of that is called polymorphism. So over here, if you look at the note, Whoops. I'm kind of going back on that employee. Uh, let's say I have a method called raise, set raise. One, you pass in an amount as a double. And then the other one, you pass in an amount and in the date that the raise starts at. If I, if I input it right now, the raise starts today. If I put it in at a start date, it'll, it'll start on, on a particular day. 
right? Notice that I now when I want to access set rays, it'll give me the option. Which one do you want to use? The first one or the second one? And it depends on the input that I put in. So if I put only in a, uh, a single amount or one input parameter, it'll, it'll run the code for the first one. If I put in two input values, one's a double and the other one's a date data type, well, then it'll use that one. Okay? Maybe I have another set raise where it has a mount and it doesn't have a date, but it has a different data type there. So then I could have another one, a third one. Right? And it depends on the data that's input into it. And it'll know which one to use. Okay? Very, very uh, popular technique of object oriented program. Very, very popular uh, and very powerful because now I could create multiple versions of a uh, input. You'll you'll be surprised at how much this comes up because people you sometimes you'll you'll be writing code and you'll be like oh I need to use it like this oh and then you later on you're like oh geez it'd be great if I had the same method uh, but this time I only need to input only input this type of data and it would be perfect if I can do it in both ways. So in the olden days we would create. Um, a set raise one and a set raise two. Like we would put a number, yeah, you would put, because you, you, you couldn't, you couldn't use, if it was an object oriented programming language, right? You'd have to come up with two separate names. Like set raise with date, set raise without date. Ah, and it makes it really painful. And you'd have all these things, and you're like, oh, it's all confusing, right? This way, um, it, it makes things much, much more user friendly and easier to use and easier to program. So what we're gonna do, is um, we could even do it for a constructor. So we're gonna create, we're gonna um, use this technique of polymorphism, which is called uh, overloading. Okay, you're overloading a method. In this case, we're overloading the constructor. Overload means well, we're gonna have two of them or more that are the same name. Okay. There's also one called overriding, which uh, when we go to our form. I'm going to show you how we can even, we'll, we'll use that technique. So polymorphism, there's a couple different ways of doing it. Okay, so we're going to overload our constructor, which is polymorphism. So we're going to create two of them. So the first one is, I'm not going to pass in any inputs into it. And what it's going to do is it's going to automatically uh, draw a uh, cell by a default size and color. Just black and white. Black border, white color inside. If you choose to use that, that's how it'll work. It'll just create a black border, white white inside. If you use the second method, you'll pass in and, and default size, whatever size we say. 10 by 10, 20 by 20, whatever. If we use the second overloaded uh, constructor, that one you pass in the size, you pass in the color and the border color that you want. So you either use the default or you use the custom. Depends on how you want to do it. Okay. So when you see it, you'll you'll probably understand a lot more of what I mean. Okay. So we're creating two methods, or in this case, two constructors of the same data of the same name. So we're overloading it, but it'll allow us to do that because we'll have different input parameters for them. So we'll do public. And then uh, the constructor always has the same name, cell, and it'll be like this. Okay? And what we're going to do is uh, we're going to set a default size. So we'll just manually set M size equal to, uh, let's say, 10 pixels. And then M background color will set to color uh, dot white. And then M border color. Uh, we'll set to color uh, dot black. Okay. So when you use the new keyword and create a cell, if you choose to not pass anything in, this is what you'll get when you when the cell gets drawn on the screen. It'll just be white with the blackboard. Done. No. Maybe we'll put a little comment. Default to um, uh, white and black border. Now, 
now we're going to use polymorphism and we're going to create another constructor. Okay? So we'll just type in public cell, but this time I'm going to put input parameters so it's going to work. Because it because C# -sharp will be able to distinguish between the first one I just made and this this other one. They're different. Even though they have the same name, but they're different, right? So this one here, we're going to pass in the size. We're going to pass in a color, which is going to be the background color. And then we're going to pass in another color, which is going to be the border color. I spell mine the Canadian way, so I put the U in there. So when we read in those three parameters, what are we going to do with them? What are we going to do? I'm going to, I call this cell, I pass in the size, background, so my code, what's my code going to do here? Inside this, uh, inside this constructor, what does my code have to do? Sorry? What? No, I'm not going to draw it here because this is my constructor. All I'm doing is I'm setting the size, background color, and border color. What's it going to do? Yeah, we're going to assign M size, background color, and border color to those values that are passed in, right? Now, I want to introduce to you one other little thing, and it's, um, it's a key, special keyword. And it's called, the keyword is called this. T-H-I-S. Okay? What this is means this class. So if you type in this and put a period after, you're saying this dot. And then what it does is it gives you all your fields, um, all your properties, all your methods, everything in that class. A lot of, a lot of coders, including myself, really like to use the this keyword because it distinguishes when I'm using an internal variable in that class. I know when I see this in there that it's not one of the variables passed in that I'm using, but I'm using something that's built into the class itself. So if you put a period after this, you'll see, it's just, this is kind of like the, the object of, the, of its class without having to create the new keyword with it. So you put the period after, and then you can see all my private variables are there. And when I create properties and methods, they'll all be there too. So anytime I, personally, it's my personal preference, I like to do it. Whenever I use another method in a class or another in, like variable, like a private field, typically I wouldn't use a property because the property is just the encapsulation of a private field. So in most cases you don't have to. You can use the private field directly. Um, but again, that might depend on what you're doing. Um, I always put this there because it highlights that I'm using something that's built in that class that's already exists. Okay, so this dot m size, right, is going to equal size. This dot m border color, it's going to equal the uh, border uh, color that gets passed in, and this dot um, background color. It's going to equal the value background color that gets passed in. So when I look at this code, I know right away, when I see the this.n size right here, all this stuff right here, I know right away. This is all built-in private fields that I have there. I don't even have to think twice about it. It's using the this keyword. Once you get used to it a little bit, you'll see that it's very, very useful uh, to do this. Okay. You don't have to use it if you don't like it. At first, I was like, I don't know. But then after I after I really started to uh, realize how, how powerful, um, and it, and it becomes a thing. Let's say if I scroll back up here, this these variables. Uh, if I didn't put M's in front of them, this is called size, background color, and border color. And then I had size, background color, border color. I have size equals size, border color equals border color, right? Um, how would I know that the one I'm using is the private one that's built in? 
I mean, I put M's in front of them just to help out. But if I did this dot size, if I didn't have the M's in there, right? This dot size equals size, this dot, then I know I'm saving it to the private variable. Now, I know it could be confusing to you guys, but it's the way, it's the object of your programming. I mean, it's just the way it is. So I, I, I don't want to do it that way to confuse you even more, but um, when you guys look up other people's codes and things like that, you're going to see the, or you might go off to university next year and take a computer science course and your prof is doing something like that and then you know you know exactly what they're doing and it might be in a different way because different languages have different ways to access the objects within it I can't remember if Java uses the this keyword or not I think it does if you use uh, Visual Basic it uses me me dot whatever uh, I don't know if C, what C++. C++ might use this. I, uh, I can't remember. It's been a while. Okay, so now I have a constructor, and uh, depending on which one I use, I either set the colors of the, or side, right? Uh, the person, the user of the class will actually set it, or it's going to use the default, depending on which, uh, which one they, they choose to use. Okay? The next thing we're going to do is we'll do our properties. And then, um, so we'll have the properties for each one of the uh, uh, size, background color, and border color. These are easy to type in real quick. We could just do pub. Something blew my face. Public int size. Okay. I'll show you even uh, uh, to use less space for these things because we don't have a lot of code inside the get and the set. So you could do it like this. Um, maybe I should put the set first. Bracket, and then we'll say m size equals value because that's what's passed in, right? You could do it like that. Put it all in one line. It's not a lot. If you had more code in there that you were checking, right, because there's only one line of code in each, I just put it in like that just to save space and it's really easy to read, right? This is my little thing that I do. But you could do it like this if you want. You want to do it like this? It's the same thing. You want to do it like that? Go ahead, right? I don't know. I'm just going to do it the other way. And just do all three of them. So public color, whoops. Nice and compact. I like to have my properties nice and compact, especially if they're just straight up reading in the value and assigning it. So you can do everything in just a few lines. It makes it, it, makes it much, much more easy to, uh, to implement and code. And so you don't have all this lengthy code, too.
How's that so far? Are we okay with this? It's not too bad, right? Now again, uh, we could go uh, over here. You can um, go ahead and put uh, this dot M size, right? So a lot of times I would do that. Okay, I didn't put it in there. Right, you can put the this keyword in. Same thing back up here. I like to do that so when I look at it, I know I'm dealing with the internal or, or private variables. You don't have to do it like that, but for me, I, I like it because it, um, it makes sure that I know what I'm dealing with a little bit better. Now, if we were trying to run this, you would you would get a problem. It would say a project with an output type of class cannot be started. So you can't run it. So what you do is you just right-click and you do build. This will compile it. And then when you build it, you can, you can see if you had any errors on, on your output. Um, if you had errors, you'd get an error in your error list, right? So I got no errors, no warnings. My output's good. So I know that up to this point, um, I've done everything correctly, like at least syntax-wise. So build, it built it. It actually created the DLL too. So you can now include what you've done so far into any project. Okay, so everyone do a double check and make sure that you can build it and get no errors. Okay. If you're getting errors, then just quickly fix what you what you have. And then we only have a few minutes left, so I want to make sure we can get the the actual grid method running. Okay, so the last thing we're going to do is our section for our methods, and right now we'll just do the one method. Okay, so we'll put a little section methods, and then I mean, we could have used the class designer to do this, but it's just as fast. We can manually do it. We kind of designed it, you know, already by looking at our, at our at over here. We kind of looked at all the different things that we wanted to do, even though it wasn't in a class diagram. But so we're going to go over here, um, and then what we're going to do is this particular draw method. It's not going to return a value. Okay, because what it's going to do is actually draw on the surface. <clears throat> so we have to pass in the surface, okay, in order for it to work. So we're going to do pub. We want to make it public. It's public. It'll be void because there's no no data type, uh, no return type, and we're just going to call it draw like we said. Okay, the first input parameter. Guess what? It's going to be called graphics just G. So we just put passing graphics G. So when we use this, we have to pass in that graphics object. Okay, so we'll look at that when we do our little test program, and then we want to pass in that x and that uh, y value for the actual cell itself. Now, some of you might say, "Well, why didn't we make it? We can make properties for the x and y, yeah." And we could make it part of our constructors, yeah. You could do it that way if you if you'd want. Okay. Um, I found from the past that this works the best way, putting it in this particular spot. You'll see why. You'll see later on when we when we implement the drawing method of the actual the grid itself that it, it, this works out nicely. Okay. So in order to draw, first thing we have to do is. Um, we're going to create, now to do the border, we have to create, we need a pen, and to do it filled in, we need the brush. So we need both. So we're going to have to create, um, the, create a pen and a brush. So we're going to, sorry, I'm going to go a little bit quick because I don't want time to run out. So if you don't get it, all, I'm recording it anyways, and then I'll show you at the beginning of class. But I just want to get it in the video. Okay, so we're going to create the pen. And we're going to call it the, the pens for the border pen equals new pen. And 
the color is based on whatever the border color is, right? And that'll be, and that's this dot border color. Or this dot M border color. Okay? And then the brush, it'll be the, I can just call it, I'm just going to call it the back brush. Okay? Equals new solid brush. Oh, sorry, we want to call it solid brush, sorry. Solid brush, back brush, new solid brush. Okay, and that'll be the M background color. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we want to draw, we want to draw the filled in first. So you want to draw the background in first, and then we're going to draw in the actual border. If we did it the other way around, the uh, background would go over top of the border. Unless we did a calculation to, I think the borders are about one pixel thick. Uh, why do all that work when you could just rearrange the order? So draw, draw it all solid first, and then draw the border around. It's easier. It's the easiest way. So uh, draw uh, cell. So uh, we'll do G dot fill. We want to do fill rectangle first, and we're gonna fill that in with the back brush. We're going to pass in the X and the Y, and then we're going to use this dot M size for the width, and this dot M size for the height, because those are going to be the same. Now, again, if you wanted your size to have a length and a width, like uh, Gurpreet suggested earlier on, then you would put the length and the width. We made that. We're made. We're all our cells are going to be square, so that's why size is used for both. So let me scroll this over. So we do the fill first, and then and then we're gonna do the uh, draw, which is just the uh, not draw arc, draw rectangle. And then we pass in the uh, border pen, and then the X and the Y, and then this dot M size goes in there for both of the uh, dimensions. And then don't forget, we want to dispose drawing tools, but don't do not dispose the graphics. G. Just the pens. The graphics G stays. If you dispose the graphics when we do the grid, it'll draw the first one and dispose the graphics object. Then it won't draw the others. Okay. So the pens can go, but not the graphics. So we'll just say uh, border pen dot dispose, and then um, back brush dot dispose okay and I'm sorry I rushed a little bit but now we can digest it a little bit well you've done this before many times right last year okay so we create our pen we create our brush and they're based on the um, the properties right or the private variables so those are going to be assigned for sure there's no way that I'm ever going to call this draw without those ever being there being assigned a value because the constructor does it. Whether it's the blank constructor, which assigns it to white, or it's the other constructor, which assigns it specific colors, right, by the user. And then we call the fill rectangle. Okay, so the fill rectangle will go in and, and just before we go. So the fill rectangle calls, colors, it all, colors it all in. Right? And then the draw will go right along the same edge in the black and then just go over top of it. And then so it'll look like there's a cell with a border on it. Okay? And it works out nicely. If you do it the other way around, the uh, border gets uh, colored over. So that's why we always do the border second. Tomorrow we'll test it out and see to use it. Okay?